Good evening. It is 6 o'clock on Tuesday, January 3rd, 2017. Welcome and thank you for joining us tonight for the English edition of Aura News, where we bring you today's top stories translated into English every weeknight. Albanian kindergartens and schools will not open this week due to the flu, which is in fact spreading more rapidly than expected. Schools and kindergartens were scheduled to start tomorrow after the New Year holidays, but the Ministry of Health has issued an order today for their remained closure until January 7th as a preventative measure to keep the flu from further spreading. Shortly after this, the Ministry of Education also announced that all schools and kindergartens will be closed January 4th, 5th, 6th, and 7th. In just the last week, the number of citizens having been hospitalized with the flu is higher than normal and continues to increase. Meanwhile, the country has had extremely cold weather recently and the temperatures look to be even lower in the coming days, creating conditions to further spread the flu. The Institute of Public Health urges citizens to take care with their hygiene and get vaccinated in order to avoid serious forms of the flu. One of the nine people convicted of recruiting fighters for Syria has given an interview to Aura News Journalist and declared that Albania is not at risk for extremist groups. From the prison cell, the man convicted of recruiting fighters said that those who went to Syria were not recruited, but they all went voluntarily. The 50-year-old man is one of nine convicted by the appellate court, which decreed 10 years in prison for them. He claims to be innocent and that he will appeal the case to the Supreme Court and then to international courts if he needs. The nine defendants were convicted for jihadist violent propaganda and for recruiting 70 fighters. They all deny the accusations. Two MPs, Skolchin Salami and Dashimir Tahiri, and the mayor of Kavaya, whose mandates have been interrupted by the Central Election Commission, have decided to appeal the decision and ask for its repeal. The three officials were found to have violated the decriminalization law through failure to declare previous convictions given by foreign courts. The former SMI MP, Skolchin Salami, told an Aura News journalist that tomorrow, January 4th, he will appeal the CEC's decision at the administrative court asking for its repeal. The MP said he is not judging the Central Election Commission's decision, but he added that he will ask for his rights as the law guarantees. Laura's MP, Dashimir Tahiri, is also expected to do the same as his lawyer declared that he will appeal the Central Election Commission's decision. Kavaya's mayor, Elvis Roshi, is also expected to appeal the CEC's unanimous decision with the Constitutional Court. The dismissal for Kavaya's mayor was signed by the Prime Minister, Eddie Rama, after the Central Election Commission's decision. Mr. Roshi's defense lawyer told an Aura News journalist that the appeal is being prepared and that it will be made within the legal deadlines. prosecution general is now verifying the pasts of state officials under the decriminalization law. Official sources within the prosecution told an Aura News journalist that the prosecution has asked for fingerprint verification from senior state officials who are also subject to the decriminalization law. The prosecution says that these verifications have been made in cases when the prosecution has discovered an official has changed their name but failed to declare that. Verification responses have arrived for some of the officials and the prosecution has taken action as needed while responses for the remaining officials are expected soon. The decriminalization department at the prosecution general is currently verifying 570 officials. 20 of them are senior officials such as MPs or mayors. Officials from public administration make up the highest number of declaration forms sent to the prosecution for further verification. It also has the highest number of officials that needed to fill out the declaration forms within the law. Other officials that have been sent to the prosecution for further verification come from the Central Election Commission, the President's Office, Parliament, and the Council of Ministers. 
It is learned that the prosecution has made a decision for 170 cases so far, and the other cases are still under the verification phase. The prosecution has ruled for criminal proceedings in 40 cases for falsifying their decriminalization forms. The prosecution has also made the decision to stop 50 officials from exerting their public duties. The Supreme Court has opened applications for a high judicial council member. Through an online announcement, the court issued two forms. The application for each judge who wants to be part of the judiciary governance and a second form which requires every judge to indicate the name of the judge they support for the position. Under Article 179 of the Constitution, the Supreme Judicial Council should be created within eight months from July 21st, the adoption date of the new Constitution, which means that it must be created by the end of April. With the delays for enacting the vetting law and the Constitutional Court's expected decision regarding the law on governing bodies of the judiciary may postpone the creation of the High Judicial Council and also the establishment of the Supreme Council of the Prosecution. The High Judicial Council shall be composed of 11 members. Six of them will be selected by the Judicial Conference meeting across Albania, while five others will be selected by non-judge members. Under Article 7 of the Law on Governing Bodies of the Judiciary, the six members who are to be selected from the judicial system will be three from the Court of First Instance, two members from the Court of Appeal, and one from the Supreme Court. The same procedure will be followed with the Supreme Council of the Prosecution, and the Prosecution has also publicized the announcement for that application. All these members must undergo the reevaluation procedure, but the vetting law has not yet come into effect, though the final decision of the Constitutional Court is expected. The commencement of the vetting law will enable the judicial institutions, such as the Council of Appointments and the vetting institutions, to be established. January 22nd is the deadline for the Constitutional Court to publicize its reasoning for rejecting the Democratic Party's request regarding the vetting law. Once that has been completed, all judges and prosecutors of the Republic of Albania will be vetted. Once the vetting law enters into force, the President will have five days' time to establish the Justice System's Council of Appointments, which has the exclusive rights to propose members to the Constitutional Court and to the Supreme Justice Inspectorate. The President also has 45 days time to conclude the process and to complete the establishment of the two institutions, which will check all members of justice institutions in the country. Heated debates are expected regarding the electoral reform with the start of the plenary sessions in January. The Ad Hoc Commission on Electoral Reform has been operating for eight months but the majority and the opposition have still not found consensus concerning the necessary changes to the electoral code. It seems as though the parties, regardless of their public rhetoric, agree on going into the June 18th elections with the technical changes to the electoral code as was announced for cases when parties could not find an agreement. For the first time, Albania will receive a French president, Francois Holland. The current French president will visit Albania on March 3rd of this year, and he will meet with the senior state officials. President Holland's visit will be made a month before his mandate ends, and he has announced that he will not run for another term. The French president is a known supporter of the German chancellor, Angela Merkel, and his visit to Albania will be made shortly before the complete implementation of the vetting law, which could be detrimental as full implementation is the main condition for Albania's integration into the European Union. That's all for our English edition this evening. Please join us again Monday through Saturday at 6 p.m. for your local news in English. My name is Mari, and on behalf of Ora News, Thank you and good night.